Hey, here to learn something new? Well, to keep those knowledge gears greased, remember to subscribe and hit the notification button to get notified when a poppin' fresh video is ready for your consumption. Let's talk about Arduinos, the gateway drug to microcontrollers that can turn a novice tinkerer into a mad scientist. The Arduino is the perfect tool for anyone that wants to get started with electronics but wants a fairly simple learning curve. It all starts with this. Hey, what the, get that! <sighs> I thought that was a bug. Sorry. It all starts with this, a microcontroller. And in layman's terms, it's basically an electronic brain. Robot brains! Microcontrollers are micro in that they're small, and controllers in that they can control other electronic components. You can control LEDs, motors, buttons, speakers, sensors, and tons of other electronic components. But early in the days of electronics, there was quite a learning curve to somehow connect components to a microcontroller, connect it to your computer, and then program commands onto it. There were some circuit boards that made the process easier, but at the time, they were very expensive. Enter a university team from Ivora, Italy who wanted to make a cheaper, easier way for people to get started with microcontrollers. Che bello! That is a genio! What will you call it? Um, Arduino? Bellissimo! I could kiss you! And so it began. Arduino started as open source software for programming microcontrollers, but eventually became branded as the microcontroller platform itself. The platform being this credit card sized circuit board with a microcontroller stuck on it. The circuit board is intended to have everything on it to make it easier to connect things to it and program it. Which if you were to build the same thing on your own, it'd probably look something like this. You have your USB port which not only plugs into your computer so you can program it, but it can also power the thing. And then you also have your external power port if you don't want to power it through USB. You have your power management pins here, your analog pins here, and your digital input output pins here. Well isn't that nice dear, but I have no idea what you're trying to tell me. Okay, grandma. Here, let me simplify it. These ports, which I'm calling pins, allow you to control electronic components such as your LEDs, motors, fans, sensors, buttons, etc. So you can connect those components to these pins using wires and whatnot, and then program the microcontroller to control those components. You could start with something basic like controlling an LED light, or you could connect multiple components and make your own smartwatch that connects through your Bluetooth phone or something like that. So let's take a look at that basic LED example, shall we? Taking a simple LED and a 22 ohm resistor, I can connect the ground side of the LED to a ground pin on the Arduino, and then the positive side of the LED to the resistor and then onto a digital pin on the Arduino. We'll go with pin 13, but it could be just about any digital pin. Now we have to tell the microcontroller what to do. So in order to do that, let's plug the Arduino into the computer and in a web browser, go to the Arduino website to download and install the Arduino software. The Arduino software allows us to tell the microcontroller what to do by using code. I know it sounds intimidating, but it's simple if you have a good teacher. <laughs> like me. <laughs> So let's jump right in here. After launching the program, it automatically generates two sections of code, the setup section and the loop section. The setup section is where we set up the microcontroller and tell it how we're going to use things like its pins. The loop section is where we tell the microcontroller what we want it to do with the components. So to set up our LED pins, we type a command called pin mode and then we tell it which pin not including the ground pin, the LED is plugged into. Then we say if we wanted to send output or receive input from it. In our case, we're gonna be sending output to it. And that output we're gonna describe in the loop section. The information we want to send the LED is to turn on and then to turn back off. We can write our output commands to the LED by using the digital write command. We tell it what pin to write the output to and our output is going to be to turn the power signal to high so that the LED lights up. We'll use this delay command to keep the LED on for about 1000 milliseconds or one second. And then we'll use digital write again to set the power signal to low which will turn the LED off and then we'll delay that command by one second. That's it. 
not too bad. Now we just need to upload this code to our microprocessor. So first, make sure the program is connected to your Arduino by going to Tools, and then Board, and then select the type of Arduino you have. Then just click the Verify button to make sure you don't have any mistakes in your code, and then click Upload. If you did everything correctly, the LED should be blinking. I know this is basic, but it gives you an idea of how you can control bigger, more complex components. And eventually you can see how this can serve as the brains of your future robot project. That's it for this chapter of the field guide. That's one more tinkering tool to add to your toolbox. Want to suggest a guide? Head on over to tinkernut.com ideas to submit your idea. If you want more tinkering videos, you can click here. Or please be kind enough to like, subscribe, or comment. If you made it this far, here's your reward. In Mexico City, you can get free Wi-Fi by disposing of your dog poop.